So your grandma gave you her old computer, but when you take a second look at it, the processor sucks and there's barely any RAM. I mean, what can you even do with this thing? You can't just throw it away. I mean, your grandma gifted it to you and you can't disrespect grandma like that. But what if I told you that I know the perfect use for grandma's old computer? You can do anything from a personal media server to an ad blocker for your whole home network. And I'm tired of watching these YouTube videos where it's the most professional or most clean looking a home networking setup that just isn't really attainable for people like you and I. So let's begin with the basics for our home server. You'll need grandma's old computer and a copy of Tiny11, and that's literally it. But before we install Tiny11, make sure that you back up any data that you may need on some spare drives that you may have. And since we are turning our computer into a server, make sure that you have a spot where you can reliably keep your computer always hooked up to power and ethernet. Also, make sure to change your sleep settings so your server doesn't randomly go offline. Now your computer may have limited resources, and that's why I went with Tiny11 for this video. This is a version of Windows 11 that has much less processes running in the background and much less bloat compared to a stock version of Windows 11. But why not just use Linux, you may ask? Because Carlos Likes Computer said that I could use his idea for this video and I'm just trying not to copy him. So to install Tiny11, all you're going to want to do is to take your USB flash drive, plug it into your computer, and then... The application that I use is called Rufus. You're gonna to wanna to flash your Tiny11 image using Rufus, and it should give you some options to bypass all of that stuff that uh, Windows automatically makes you go through, like all the weird data collection stuff. So just make sure that you check all that stuff and then plug that in and boot from your USB drive and it should boot up into Tiny11 just like it is here. All right, and it looks like we are in the installer. Now this installer should just be, you know, like your basic Windows installer. So I'm just gonna run through it really quick because I'm sure everybody's seen a Windows installer before. And then right here, we're gonna go ahead and accept the notices and license terms. And we just have one 256 gig drive. So I'm just going to install there. And just like that is it is installing Windows and it'll go through copying files, getting everything ready, installing everything and finishing up. That's gonna take a bit. So I'm gonna leave this here. It should install just like Windows 11. And once this comes back up, we will have have Tiny11 fully installed. Next, we need to reserve the server's IP address. Reserving an IP address may sound a little bit scary, but I assure you, it's very simple and it just tells your network where to always find your server. First step is to open up a command prompt and type in ipconfig. You'll want to note down the IPv4 address that you see here. Next, you have to log into your router, tell it that you don't want your server's address to change, and there you go. You have just reserved an IP address. Now, a lot of routers are a little bit different, so make sure that you look up your make and model of router and look up how to do this. Now that Tiny11 is installed and we have our IP address reserved, you may be wondering, how do I actually make this into a server? And you'll want to install Windows subsystem for Linux. To install Windows subsystem for Linux, you'll want to open up a PowerShell window as admin, run the wsl-install command, and this will install everything that you'll need to run a subsystem on Windows 11. By default, this will install Ubuntu, but you can change the distro using wsl-install-d, and then enter the distro of your choice. If you're going to change the distro, you can get a list of available distros using the wsl-list-online command. And make sure that you keep this window open because we will need it later in the video. Now, let's set up a network share. This is a simple way to share and store files across your network, so no matter where you are, as long as you're connected to your network, you'll always have your files with you. Now you have to make sure that you have a place for all your files to live. I mean, you want your files to be comfortable, right? To do this, I'm going to make a folder called storage. In storage, I'm going to make a folder called media. We're going to need this folder when we start setting up other applications later. If you're on Windows, you can right click this PC in the Explorer. You want to click map network drive. And the correct syntax for network shares is two backslashes followed by the name of the share. And once connected, you should see the folder that we created earlier. And congratulations on your network storage. Now I'm sure you're tired of paying for streaming services like Netflix, right? We're gonna be setting up Jellyfin as our own personal Netflix or whatever service you prefer. Jellyfin is free open source and can be accessed either from the web or through dedicated apps on desktop computers, mobile devices, pretty much anything with a screen. To get this set up, we're going to install Jellyfin for Windows. Now you'll go to your browser and enter your server's address followed by colon 8096 because Jellyfin runs on port 8096 by default. Once you get to this web page, you can set this up however you'd like. Now earlier in the video, we made the media folder. Now we're going to tie our network share in with Jellyfin. We're going to make a movies folder and a shows folder within storage. We're going to point Jellyfin's movie directory to storage slash movies and the shows directory to storage slash shows. Now you can enjoy your own personal Netflix from anywhere on your network. I can tell if you're the person to get this far, you actually do care about your network. If you're on the internet often, you've absolutely been bombarded by ads that the big evil corporation tailors just for you because they 
definitely don't spy on you. So let's go ahead and get some ad blocking set up on our server. Now this can absolutely be done through your browser, but browser based ad blockers aren't really reliable and manifest V3 would have some things to say about some ad blockers. So let's just offload all of that work onto our server. We're gonna go back to our Windows subsystem for Linux window and type in this command. And this will take a while to install Casa OS, but once that's done, it should give us an IP address. You wanna put this IP address into your browser and it'll take you to the Casa OS sign on screen. Here you'll create an account and you'll be brought to a very clean and nice looking dashboard. You wanna click on the app store and it'll open a very Apple like app store. There's two options on Casa OS's app store. There's AdGuard, which will absolutely work, but it's been known to be a little bit flaky. The other option is Pihole, which I will actually be using on my server. But before we install Pihole, we wanna make sure that port 53 is available. To check, we'll run this command here, which I'm just going to copy and paste in. If it's not taken on your machine, you should be good to move on to the next step. If it is taken, we'll run this command here. This will disable the service that is running on port 53 and we'll actually need to stop the service with this command here. Now we're gonna run the first command that we ran just to make sure that port 53 is available. And once you have verified that port 53 is available, we can go ahead and install Pihole. Once this is installed, you'll open Pihole and the default setting should work just fine. The only thing that you have to do is set your DNS to the IP of your server, which you should have from when we ran the IP config command. To set the DNS on your computer, if you're on Windows, you'll go to the control panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, and you'll want to change the adapter settings. Whichever network you're using is the one you'll right click and choose properties. You'll want to find the IPv4 and click properties again. Here's where you'll put in your server's IP address and you can either put Google's DNS 4.4.4.4 or Cloudflare's DNS 1.1.1.1 as the alternate DNS server address. Now this is not the end of the possibilities that you can have with your home server. There's so much more that you can put on your server. You can make it a proxy server or even a network health monitor. Uh, there's actually so much that I couldn't possibly cover everything here. So why not check out when I made the tiniest server?